This patient is 50 plus years old, and we're going to be doing cataract surgery on him, small incision phacoemulsification with insertion of a posterior chamber of track lens. This is a uh, ring speculum with, or ring forceps, a Thornton ring forceps that will hold the eye uh, for my initial incision. These tips are blunt to avoid damage to the conjunctiva and bleeding. So we want a three-step corneal incision. So initially down to half stroma. Now 50% stroma for about two to two and a half millimeters. Now back into the cornea. So there's my incision. That should self-seal. Okay. So uh, if this was topical, I would put in intracameral lidocaine. But since it's a block, I will not use intracameral lidocaine. This is ProVisc. I'll put a little bit outside the eye to clear any air bubbles. So just enough viscoelastic uh -huh. to maintain anterior chamber shape. This is a 75 blade that I'll use for my second incision. This incision is parallel to the iris and only about a millimeter. Now we'll start the capsular rexus. 0.12 to hold the conge. My initial rexus starts centrally and moves out several millimeters and then I begin the tear. And this is Utrata forceps for the rexus. I want the rexus maybe about five and a half millimeters in size. And I take several grafts of the capsule to keep it short. Capsular Rex is complete. This is a soft nucleus with a dense posterior subcapsular cataract. So we'll hydrodissect just under the lip of the anterior capsule. And I'm going to try to flip this. So we have a flip. There's a tendency for the iris to prolapse, so I will use some viscoelastic to put it back. Now, we'll begin the phaco. I'll use the 0 0.12 forceps to introduce the phaco needle. So this is a soft lens. There's a little piece of nucleus trapped in the wound. Let's get that right away. 
Now we can set it on cortex. All right, now we'll begin the INA. We're always very gentle. We don't want to uh, push anything. So what I'll do now is switch to my 90 degree irrigation and aspiration cannula. And this is very good for sub-incisional cortex. We can open the lens. Let's have the BSS on the 27 gauge cannula. So what I want to do is just do um, a little bit of polishing of the capsule. I'm very careful not to hurt the capsule. Now we've opened the capsule bag. Not too much, just enough. I inspect it to make sure there's no scratches or defects. Okay, the cartridge is filled with viscoelastic. We can see the icon of the implant. We match the haptic with the haptic to make sure the implant is not inserted upside down. Next, I'll start a flex of the leading haptic. Gently push the implant into the cartridge. Then we have to press down on the implant. Now we're tucking the trailing haptic over the optic. And then gently pushing on the edge of the optic to advance the implant down the cartridge. This is called a Marnark injector and it fits in, it's snaps into place. Now I want to make sure that the injector paddle engages the implant properly mm. and does not ride over or under the implant. Now we'll begin to turn the screws. And we're advancing the implant oh. just before the tip of the injector. We don't want any portion of the implant exposed outside the tip. So I'm going to use the nucleus rotator. I think this is called a Beckert in order to provide counter traction to the eye when I insert slowly, I advance the implant into the eye. Now we need to insert the implant into the capsular bag. We start by ensuring that the leading haptic is in the capsular bag. And very carefully, we place the optic in the capsular bag. We make sure that the trailing haptic gets into the capsular bag. So now the implant is in the capsular bag and we wanna make sure that the haptics spring out and make contact with the sulcus of the bag. Now it's very important that we remove all of the viscoelastic. Now I'll have some BSS. I'll use the BSS for two purposes. One is to do an irrigation of the anterior chamber to confirm there is no retained cortex. 
We can see that quite a bit in patients who take tamoxifen, Flomax. Uh, the second reason for the irrigation is to hydrate the wound to ensure that it is watertight. Wound hydration both above and below. I'm careful not to hydrate under decimase membrane because that could cause a decimase membrane detachment. I confirm that the implant is centered. I will now check to confirm that the wound is watertight without suture. And the wound is watertight without sutures, both the primary and secondary wound. I do not push on the sclera to check wound integrity. I just gently touch the wound with no pressure. Pupil is round. IOL is centered. The wound is watertight. Chamber is deep. And so we are done. And now we'll put some drops in the eyes.